there's arguably nothing more satisfying in Elden Ring than pulling off a critical hit. From the Kill Bill visuals to the exaggerated, sonorous ring, critical hits carry an aesthetic potency that matches the devastating damage they deal. But the precise nature of how that damage is calculated is shrouded in mystery for the average player. The number seems random, plucked out of the sky. It doesn't even seem to track with common sense. The Crucible Knights, clad as they are in heavy armor, should be resistant to the slash or pierce damage dealt by katanas, and weaker to the strike damage dealt by hammers, clubs, and maces. So why is it that my katana dealt more critical damage than my great mace? One might be tempted to look to the stats menu for answers, but doing so only leads to a cascade of further questions. We have a line here for critical stat, but typically it will just say something like 100 or 110 or 120, but 100 what? On the other lines, it's obvious. This means X units of damage. But it can't mean that here, because you'll be leagues off if you just add 100 to your base damage. So again, 100 what? Well, to answer this, we gotta back up a little bit. Let's briefly note that there are different types of critical hits, and the class of critical hit we're discussing is going to determine the rules for damage calculation. While the animation and sound are the same, these are actually distinct forms of critical attack. Critical hits can take the form of a backstab, a parry and riposte, an attack while an enemy is afflicted with the sleep status, a critical hit after an enemy has been unhorsed, and a critical hit following the breaking of an enemy's stance. For most of this conversation, we're going to discuss riposts to keep things simple, but the overall framework for understanding everything is universally applicable. So back to the question 100 what? Well, it turns out it is 100%. Specifically, 100% of an obscured preset critical hit damage value for a weapon of its type. Elden Ring weapons secretly carry a standard value for their critical hit damage, and this value is dictated largely by the weapon class to which they belong. For example, the class of katanas deal generally three times your base damage on a critical hit following a successful parry. I'm going to show you a, a chart I scraped together from Fextra to detail this. But if what I've just said has triggered apoplectic rage in you, hold your horses because I'm going to then explain how everything I've just said is basically a lie. If this is confusing, just bear with me. So what we can see here is the way you can calculate the damage your weapon is going to do on a critical hit following a successful parry. My Uchi Katana belongs to the weapon class of Katanas, which give you three times your base damage on a critical hit. The critical hit rating we see in the menu of Elden Ring, in the equipment page, is indicating whether or not your specific weapon deviates from this general rule. A critical rating of 100 means that it deals 100% of this critical hit multiplier. In other words, 100 means it's going to deal the exact same amount of damage as we'd expect looking at this chart. When a specific weapon has a rating of, say, 110, it means it will deal 101% or 1.1 times the multiplier associated with its class. So, for example, the Misery Cord has a critical rating of 140. The standard dagger multiplier for a critical hit is times 4, and this dagger deals 1.4 times that, which means you're going to do 5.6 times your base damage on a critical hit following a parry if you use this dagger. Let's hop back into the game and see if we can figure out how we arrive at the critical hit damage we see on the screen. Now, in my No Hit Crucible Duo video, which I've uploaded separately a few days ago, and which opened this video, I had my katana infused with frost buildup. This has the impact of splitting damage type and scaling into both physical and magic, which turned out to make the math a bit of a nightmare, so I hit up the bonfire and retooled the Uchi katana to deal only physical damage. I ignored my trauma-induced instincts to recoil at the thought of reviving the Crucible Knight duo, and went ahead and pulled the trigger, and racked up some parrying footage here, and my crit damage is now 417. 
Okay, so let's figure out how to get there. First of all, critical hit damage is subject to the same resistances depending on the enemy against whom they're used as regular damage is. As a refresher, weapons deal different types of damage, and each enemy in the game is weak to certain types of damage and resistant to others. This information is also hidden from the player in-game, but it's very widely accessible online, and a lot of times it's pretty intuitive. Armor is going to be resistant to slash damage, for example, but weaker to strike damage. I'm going to link to a spreadsheet that I've used for this and for the rest of my information in this video. I wish I could credit the authors, but I just found them linked in Reddit posts without attribution. Crucible Knights resist 35% of slash and pierce damage, which is the damage that the katana deals. All enemies also have a flat damage defense, which unlike damage negation, is a raw number of damage that just automatically evaporates when you attack them. The Crucible Knights have a damage defense of 111. So, our math looks like this. And, as you can see, there's a problem. I'm getting 417 on a critical hit against the Knights, but according to this calculation, I should be getting only 357. Well, here's where I have to admit that this has all been a lie. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. It's more accurate to say that what Fextra is providing is a set of general approximations. It's generally true that katanas have a critical hit multiplier on reposts of somewhere in the ballpark of 3. But in reality, weapon damage in Elden Ring is dictated by a much more granular and abstruse set of data called motion values. An easy way to think about motion values is as precise deviations from the attack rating you see on the screen unique to each individual weapon. There's a motion value for every type of attack for every individual weapon, and these values are written in terms of percent of the attack rating you see on screen. So, for example, the motion value of the Uchi Gatana's light attack is 100, which means it's identical to the number you see on your equipment menu. Easy enough. For a one-handed heavy attack, the motion value is 125, and for a charged value it's 160, which means 125% and 160% of the base value respectively. This number and this number alone dictates the precise damage that each attack of each weapon is going to discharge. Now, according to these charts, which I could find online, the motion value for the response crit on an Uchi Gatana is 345. This is going to make a considerable difference, so let's adjust our math. And as you can see, this gets us much, much closer, up to 411. But we're still six off, and figuring out these last six points was really just an exercise in educated guesswork. While fiddling around, I realized that changing the motion value simply from 345 to 350 got us precisely to 417. So I'm going to guess that From Software tinkered with some of the motion values in a patch released subsequent to this spreadsheet's publication, or the publication is just marginally off on its data. Regardless of any slight inaccuracies in these reported motion values, being only 6 points off is a very trivial concern, and it provides a much more accurate picture than the information on Fextra that breaks crits down by weapon class rather than by the individual weapon. I still think that the information Fextra provides is useful though, as giving you a ballpark estimate can help you understand why certain weapons are generally going to be better for critical hits than other weapons and the circumstances in which you need to predict your damage output with the microscopic precision motion values provide are difficult to envision. As for why this information is all hidden from the player, I can really only speculate. For one, it's a lot of data, and I don't think there would be an easy way to communicate motion values for every different attack type in the game. Second, I think From Software might fear that motion values could suck the artistry and experimentation out of the game, as, the thought might be, players would gravitate towards the same weapons and the same attacks to deal the absolute maximum damage, when often the difference in damage based on motion values is actually much more trivial than it might appear.
the numbers we get from the display menus in-game work to give a general sense of what kind of damage you deal with a weapon, allowing you to compare and contrast without devolving into a sterile, soulless calculus. So that's it for this video. That's my explanation for how that critical hit number uh, works. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you enjoyed it. I hope this video was informative, um, and thank you so much for watching.